Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about a tip that I've uh, discovered and a little bit of a trick that you can do inside Ableton using some utilities, uh, and that is to swap the left and the right channel. Uh, so I've made a rack for that and I'll first guide you through the process of how I actually discovered this trick and talk a little bit more about the different controls of the utility. And then uh, we'll talk about uh, this actual rack and the uses for it that you can do with it. So let's have a look at the project. Hey guys, I just wanted to quickly say if you want to support this channel, go to my Spotify or Apple Music. There you can follow me and add some of my songs to your daily listening playlist. Thank you very much. Let's get back into the video. Okay, first I want to talk about how the utility works. And to do that, what I've done is have created an instance of Serum, which has a, saw, a square wave in the left channel and the uh, saw wave in the right channel. So this is just so we can distinguish the left and the right channel. Now, we have this EQ here, which is sitting behind these two utilities. And um, these two utilities together are uh, going to perform the swapping for us. Um, so I'll kind of show you how it works. Um, let's take the first utility and just listen to the left channel. What you'll see is that it only produces this square wave, which we can see from the harmonics here. So if I play a note, you can see the harmonics are a square harmonics series. Um, you can see that because um, the difference between the first and the second harmonics showing up on, on the spectrum here is not an octave. So that's how we distinguish square waves from saw waves. In a saw wave, that is the case. So if I put this to the right, we can hear and see that this is a saw wave. G and G there as well. So you can have a little look down here, right, where it says the key. So that's where you look for to see the harmonics. And again, Going to the left, you have the harmonics are different. Um, one is a G and the other is a D. So that's not an octave and therefore we know it's a, uh, likely a square wave. So now what we can do now that we have isolated this square wave here is that we can turn it into uh, mono. Um, so that's what we're going to do. What this is going to do is basically going to copy that uh, square wave which we now only have in the left channel and it's going to put it in both channels. And now we can balance that to the right. If we group these together, you can hear how the left channel and the right channel are being swapped if we turn this on and off. Obviously, it is isolating the left channel if we turn it on. Uh, let's actually do it like this so you can properly hear what's going on. So now let's look at this rack that I've made, which is basically two chains. One is um, taking left channel and putting it to the right, and the other is taking the right channel and putting it to the left. So it's swapping both channels. Uh, so this is a very easy rack. You should be able to make this yourself with the theory that we've just discussed. Uh, let's now look at some things that you can actually do with this rack. So here I have simple asset sound, and uh, it sounds like this. As you can see, we have set up a delay um, on a different uh, channel here. The reason why I've done this is so I can isolate the delay sound and apply effects to only the delay. Uh, this is a trick that I've talked about before on this channel as well. Uh, I'll put a link to the video to that in the description or in the cards or wherever. Um, but this is a really cool trick and uh, in this case it allows us to affect um, the delay signal as well. So what you can hear for this delay is that it's actually ping-ponging. So it's playing first one to the left, then to the right, then to the left, then to the right. So it's alternating between playing to the left and the right. Uh, and we can do some cool stuff with that. So let's listen to that. And what we can do, for example, let's say that we wanted to start at the right. We can just use one of those effect tracks that I made before, which is swap left and right. And now it will start playing at the right. And because this delay is on its own separate channel, the sound here will actually not be changed. So the left and the right channel here will still be the same. It's just the delay that's now, instead of starting at the left, starting at the right. Um, so we can do something cool with this. If we duplicate this track, we now have two delay tracks and we can remove this rack from one of them and we'll have one delay that's starting in the left and one delay that's starting in the right. So you'll get a normal kind of delay effect. 
you can hear this is very mono. That's because the left and the uh, right channel are identical um, because these two delays are identical. But we can change that. We can induce some change into these delay settings. So let's do that. Um, for example, let's add a little bit of an overdrive to one of them. So we'll just add a little bit extra sharpness there. Uh, we might add a pedal to the other one, little drive here. Let's add that there. And um, I'm, I'm just kind of going over it, randomly adding some effects. We'll add like a chorus effect to this one and then we'll add a phaser or flanger to the other one. And I'm going to put that before all uh, our swap channels here. So now you can hear that even though um, the delay is playing both in the left and the right channel, you can distinctly hear the difference between them. In this case, um, this delay also takes longer to echo out because this is adding a lot more gain to it and therefore it just takes longer to echo out which turns the delay from like almost a mono effect into a ping pong delay as it goes on longer. You could actually do that uh, manually. What you could do, for example, is something like this. We have it like this. And then you'll start off with a mono delay and then we'll just over time turn it into a ping pong delay. So something like this with a simple volume automation. So you can hear the first few ones are very mono um, and then it turns uh, slightly wider with each um, delay hit that you hear. So that's a very cool technique that you can use in your own productions um, just with this little rack which you can make. Again, going through it is very simple. You have two identical chains. The only difference is um, these two are, um, you know, opposite from each other, as you can see. And uh, the, again, the way this works is it isolates the left channel, then we set it to both channels and then it turns that into the right channel. And this one isolates the right channel, set that to both channels, so sets it to mono and then turns it into the left channel. So that's very easy and it just takes a very little bit. Uh, um. So that's very easy and it takes very few effects, but um, the creativity that you can do with this, as I've shown, is, is very uh, big. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this. So I would love to see what you guys can come up with for this trick. Uh, if you have an interesting result from experimenting with this or, or using it in your own productions, uh, let me know in my Discord server, which will be uh, in the description down below. Uh, that's the best place to communicate with me. Uh, otherwise, leave a comment if you enjoyed the video and uh, maybe write some idea there as well so people can easily see it in the comments. Um, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you um, aren't subscribed yet, then I would really appreciate it if you did. Uh, it takes a little bit of time and it means the world to me. So that would be really nice. Uh, but this is going to be the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.